All right. All right. All right. We should be good now. That ought to do it. Sorry about that, everybody. Maug78. That's This is a really, really bad first impression. I'm sorry, buddy. I hope you stick around, though. Thanks for coming by the stream. How's everybody doing tonight? Mobius Y here. Time of recording this. Um, Tuesday, November 23rd. We're back in Stellaris Console Edition. Let's load up our Necrophage game. I don't need to do the posting thing anymore because I already did that kind of prematurely. But it's Necrophage stream game. Let's get that going. To be watching this in the future on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the video, do get up. Leave a comment down below how you think we're doing our uh, Necrophage playthrough here. And subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date stream content or just my Stellaris Console Edition videos in general. Click the bell icon so you get a notification whenever a new video goes public. Goal for 2021 is to still try and hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. There's only a month and a bit, for like about five weeks left before that happens. So anything you can do to help out would be greatly appreciated. That includes subscribing yourself and sharing this content with anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. Uh, there's also links down below that I want you to check out in the description. You'll find one for the official Stellaris Discord where you can become part of the greater Stellaris community. There's a big section for us console edition players to talk about the game, ask questions, discuss strategies, and even set up multiplayer matches. You'll find me and many other uh, players there. Uh, most most everybody there is uh, is on Xbox console, but there are some PlayStation users as well. There are also links to my own personal stuff down below. Uh, you'll find one for my Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of. Give me a follow and pop on over Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. The typical starting time is 7 p.m. Mountain Time, and then we'll be uh, going back to that starting time for all four evenings once we finish the Mass Effect Legendary Edition playthrough. So I uh, won't be starting an hour early on the Mondays and the Thursdays anymore. So uh, hopefully I'll see you there. Hang out with us for a couple hours during a live stream. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a link to my Twitter feed as well. Give me a follow there, and uh, you'll stay up to date on all the important announcements that I post to my Twitter feed. Last link to my own personal Discord for fans to freely join able to chat with me on a daily basis or just interact with other people who watch my that's the place to be emperor badger convinced my apples are the reason online what i'm convinced new york are the reason for my jawline is that so so we've got buffo blind orphan neil manic 78 a new a new viewer welcome appreciate it emperor badger out here tonight good to see you folks thanks for yeah, I thought it might have been a typo, and then I had to realize, wait, no, he means New York, not my. All right, we're still going for a two-hour stream. I am uh, running a tad late here for obvious reasons with all the bloody uh, problems that we've just had. Santadar Station is going to very likely be the site of a um, impending battle against our neighbors. This devouring swarm piece of crap. What is their fleet doing? They're not doing anything. All right. Uh, let's unpause and see what happens. we got a research agreement forming. Do we have a defensive pact with anybody? I don't think so. I lost almost all of my baby teeth to apples. Well, apples are good for you. I like apples. I have an apple every day. I take one to... Uh, I take one to work every day as a little snack. Oh, another bot just dropped in. Thanks again for naming a planet. Hey, no problem, buddy. you have any for planet names, I will take them. Part of the fun is allowing you get to decide what the hell are our planets and whatnot. Alright, how are we doing for consumer? I am... Alright, I'm buying 40... Not do we are doing really bad consumer goods. Ugh, that's terrible. Um, let's see here. What is our trade policy right now? I think it's uh, consumer benefits, which it is. Uh, that's too bad. How much of trade? Ten. And I get apples is where I got half of my C. Eh. Well, that's good. Okay, so what? Yeah. Uh, Eden Prime. We were gonna do uh, some more civilian industries because I want to uh, turn our home world into an alloy or an alloy-centric world. So civilian industries on Eden Prime. Probably gonna do some on our uh, Forge World or Forge World uh, Food World. Excuse me. Great promise. We'll put some civilian industries down here as well. Okay, we have two clerks, so yeah, that is some spare um, spare pops. 
Upgrade those. We'll do a upgrade of planetary capital as well. I treat clerks as available pops. That's just me. Not everybody does. Just have some good hard cider. No. I don't really like cider. I tried it once and I was like, ugh. That's kind of gross. And then I've never touched it since. Uh, let's see. Blanket fort. What's happening in here? We have an entertainer, a culture worker, and a roboticist. Why do we have... Okay. I wasn't expecting to see a culture worker. Let's unlock the entertainer job. The administrator job is not being taken because right now we have Jeffarians, or I guess Jeffs, sorry. Jeffries uh, populating this habitat and they cannot take ruler jobs, if I recall correctly. So, actual good cider from a rural orchard in New York. No. Okay, so this reassembled ship shelter needs to fuck off so we can get a planetary administration. Um, what we need is on the, uh, on the blanket fort, we need a, uh, chamber of elevation. This thingy. So that we can get some necrophyte jobs. That's not going to be for a bit, though. I don't think. So, try that then. No, I'm good, buddy. Not a fan of cider. Um, so what, what, what a planet admin. We have no clerks here. Need to get some miners. Okay. Major goal this time around, we need to get our alloys, our monthly alloys up. Let's set a, let's make our mission this stream. Try to get our monthly alloys up to f plus 50 each month. Uh, how's that sound? I think we can do it. We got an unemployed ruler here because reasons. Well, getting the planetary capital uh, will help with that. Also, what are the names of the relic worlds? Our current, the only relic world have is... Oh, sorry. I fucking worded it wrong. It was supposed to be YT. Here we go. There we go. YT Maug 78. There we go. Well, that's what one of them is named. <laughs> Coolio. Alright, now we can do a chamber of elevation here. Are these vampires or... Do we have Jeffs on this planet? We sure do. Oh. Uh, where are you coming from? Okay. First wave and second wave. Ooh. First wave. Okay, so where's second wave? What are they doing? Towards Gothia system, eh? Eh. Uh, so they're on a direct course from the Gothia system. They have unknown orders. Oh my god. Wait, what? Hold the phone. What happened? These guys had like 300 fleet power. Now they've got... Th the fuck? Now they suddenly have 33,000? Oh, shit. Yeah. I... Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you get the other relic world, can you name it Nikea? Uh, what other relic world? This one? Is this a relic world? Oh, yeah, this one. This little size 12 relic world? This little piece of poop? I don't even know if I'll get this. For two reasons. First, we might fucking die here. Jeez. Yeah, I did not... I did not build up enough military. Not even close. That's brutal. Okay. Let's create a new fleet. Uh, we'll want some, uh, some destroyers because uh, destroyers have really high um, combat disengagement chance. Are you actually flying in to try to do this by yourself? You might be able to hold that off, but there is no fucking way we're holding off this nearly 50,000. Rip Lull should have kept the stream short. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> It's like, well, I started the stream, we got attacked, we got destroyed, and we lost. So, stream's over. See you next time. <laughs> uh, boy. This is my biggest problem myself, is I focus a little bit too much on literally everything else in the economy. And I kind of ignore my fleet for way too, excuse me, <clears throat> for way too long. And I get screwed over in the first war. If somebody doesn't like me, of course. 
And this is Stellaris. Somebody always doesn't like you. Uh, impulse thrusters, hyperdrive. We can do zero point reactors. What do we have here? Uh, let's do a uh, uh, picket. I don't know. I don't know. We'll do a picket computer. I think that would be wisest. Okay, so how much to reinforce this fleet? Wow, 2,800. Damn! Okay, so let's drop that. Uh, there we go. What else needs reinforcing? Oh, uh, you guys need a battleship. Right. Oops, I forgot about that. That's okay. Small fleet of a few more destroyers on the way. Yeah, not going to be able to do much with them. Uh, what is this? The Ike Conservation Act. Oh, yes, we'll... We'll support that. Somebody wants a little cooperative research channels, and that's a big no-no for me. Okay, here we First real battle. Let's see what happens. We've got several fleets in the system. Uh, we're going to get them to pull back a little bit so that the star base takes the bulk of the attack. I would have very... If, if we are able to take out this one fleet or like severely weaken it that would be amazing they come all right so they got the station under attack already let's see what happens here let us enjoy the glorious violence shall we oops i didn't mean to do that <laughs> i hit the wrong button here we go this battle will very likely decide the fate of our entire species we got we are grossly outnumbered and outgunned, but we've got a station helping us with the defense, so we shall see what happens. If there's anything I, I learned a size twelve acre monopolis is still better than size twenty four planet because alloy arcologies are OP regardless if you can only build five. I'm not gonna argue with that. That's a lot of resources going into it though. I like how some of the angles I'm looking at makes like some of the lasers disappear altogether. Alright. Check this out. They have, like, drastically superior technology, too, because they've got the X-ray lasers. And we've still just got the teeny-weeny red lasers. I can't even tell what's going on. Oh, somebody's got purple lasers. Can't remember if that's our guy or not, though. I'm enjoying the light show, though. That <laughs> Get him, boys! Dirty cat, what's up? Got a lot of, uh... Well, oh, there goes the spaceport. What? Are any of these strike craft ours? Nope. Do not think so. Well. Who are you fighting? There was a devouring swarm right next to us from the get-go this game, and uh, I neglected to build up military to uh, keep them from completely eviscerating us. So, yeah. This is where we are at. How did that fleet battle go? Where's the results? Where's the results? I can't access the battle report? What the fuck? Boo! We lost our battleship. That's all, that's an obvious. I'll send gift baskets to the families. <laughs> Okay, um, da, 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 da. let's, uh, manifest destiny. All right, we got an ascension perk available. What the hell do I want to take? I'd like to take something like Galactic Wonders would be kind of nice. Maybe the Colossus Project. 
I don't know. We'll uh, we'll leave it be for now. A special project is complete. Are we able to fucking surrender yet? What is? Th oh. Was it total war? Okay. Manning surrender and threat war goal. Ah. Well, that's too bad. White peace. They will not accept it at. Our war goal does not permit us to accept this. To do this, I should say. The mirror and mirror. Strangely, the dimensional portal on Ferrari seems to connect to a planet which looks very much like Ferrari. Stranger still, there's a signal being broadcast to us through it. Put it on screen! This is Itik on Teb of the Holy Hematologic Republic. Who are you, portal aliens? No, I am Itik on Teb. Who are you? Fascinating. If what you say is true, I think this portal bridges the gap between alternate dimensions. We are both the Itik on Teb, but at some point an event must have caused our respective dimensions to diverge. Amazing. Tell us how your vampires fare. We should trade through our portal. Much the same as it fares in your dimension, I expect. We have spread out throughout space from Malakath since the discovery of the warp drive. The warp drive? We travel by hyperlanes. Hyperlanes? Perhaps discovering different types of FTL travel was the divergence between... Sorry, was the divergence point between our two universes? Does this mean you are not beset by the warp beasts? No warp beasts here. Are they a serious threat? Warp beasts assail every known civilization. They are a threat to all life. As far as we have determined, once warp travel reached a, criti a certain critical level in the galaxy, the warp beasts awoke and attacked. Several species we know of have already fallen, but so far we are holding them off. Sounds terrible. Can we help? Yes, we should establish an interdimensional trade treaty to strengthen both our nations for the benefit of all vampires. Woefully lacking, like could attack them instead of trade deals. That would be pretty cool. Ask them, ask them about their universe. Hell, even pop migration. Does your dimension suck? Come to our dimension. It's even worse. <laughs> All right, reduced resettlement cost. Well, shit, we might have to start a new get tonight. That's kind of. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I don't even know what the hell I'd do. I was going to do a one planet challenge after this, but properly study to see how the hell I would set it up. I am sad. A spaceport is set. Well, we're uh, royally fucked, if I do say so myself. Well, we'll let this drag out just to see what happens. Maybe they say, hey, we got enough territory. This is good enough. We're going to stop here. Maybe we can keep playing. Doubtful, but you never know. We will find out. Oh. All right. Go get upgraded. Repaired. Go do stuff. Under the Pale Star. This only has two destroyers. Are you building? You are. That's because you were built. That's because you are building a battleship still, son of a bitch. <laughs> I like how this. There's this little chunk from X X little on. Algorithms. Um, let's go ahead and grab blue lasers. Sure. We are being invaded on great promise. Whoop, whoop. The world is it's okay. By our enemies. That's okay. Shit happens. Not games off stream either go uh, go my way, so it's all good. A study has been completed. I kind of like this uh, 
what this voice said, though. A study has concluded. Construction concluded. You think our little group of corvettes and destroyers can take on five battleships? Nope. A special project is complete. The enigmatic cache. And we've necrophaged some pops. Our general died. Everybody's dying. Shit's going to shit. Wouldn't it make sense to get advanced research buildings so if you get left with three with three crap planets you can tall empire yourself out? Eh. I was thinking about it, but I don't have the resources coming in to uh, to plant those is the problem. Because if you recall, we need exotic gases for that, and we right now only have plus two. We're selling one in automatic trades, which we can we can cancel at any time, of course. So I'm I've only got like plus three, maybe plus four. The world has been Freaking home world's being invaded. Oh, our home world has been invaded. Scary. Yeah, I don't think we're coming out of this one. Did we colonize in a shipe, so? Yes, we did. Rio Tinto, there you are. Beautiful. Nice size 19 Gaia world. And things were going so well for us. Apart from the fact that I had zero uh, military strength to defend with. Uh, oh well. Maybe we should declare war on maybe we should declare war on some other people too, eh? <laughs> Just to fuck with them. The cartel is not open for business. Jeff refugees from fleeing from Zelvin the Swarm have arrived on Eden Prime. This is why I prioritize defense and speed running battleships, which is fair. I don't always do that myself. In fact, I rather do. I'm more like more of a I want to build up my economy kind of thing it's different from game to game like in uh, I've been playing a lot of Age of Wonders Planetfall lately and I'm different there like I do I do things kind of different there where I still want to build I still build up my economy but I also pump out a few units to just add it myself like every time it's a completely different situation from what I usually do and wind up with in um, Stellaris. Let's cancel all these. You could pull all your pops back you far, far off safer planets and build soldiers. Very true. Lank of Fort is being bombarded. Uh, Maug 78. We're about to... Ooh, oh no. I think we're going to have to... Uh, we have to abandon the planet. Do 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 do. And then where is great power? Way down there. Kind of by itself for now. Alright, Rio Tinto is like seeing some severe problems right now. <laughs> Consolidate! Um What else do we want? Let's go ahead and do a sanctuary of repose. Just for funsies. And hmm. Slap a couple alloy foundries down, sure, why not? A science vessel has been Fuck it. Do it live. A study has been completed. Study has concluded. High war exhaustion. Can we surrender now? No. Oh boy. Improved reactor boosters, very good. Uh, we could go ahead and grab the advanced reactor booster so we get rid of them. Yaxkalox Citizen State declared war on the Yaxkalox Syndicate. Okay. These guys are going at it again. A hostile fleet has appeared to us. Everything is falling apart. Keep building! Exactly. Meanwhile, where is Ferrari? Uh... I want them to have an Aikmanopolis 
I spent all this time and stuff. We were we were so close to an AK Monopolis. Son of a bitch. Oh well. I had an empire that once spammed half the galaxy that got curb stomped back onto six backwater planets and recovered from that. I've recovered from uh all I had left was um like two systems. One planet, three habitats. The only reason they had difficulty advancing further is because it was kind of in a... Uh, where the hell would be a good example? There we go. It was, it was a pair of systems kind of like this, like Ikuichromia and Avalam, where they... It was like they were on the edge of the galaxy, and then uh, the one star was out in buttfuck nowhere, and there was just one hyperlane connected it to connecting it somewhere else. And... Uh, uh, that one star system that was closer, further in in the galaxy branched off, like, deeper into my territory, so I actually had a really built-up uh, fortress habitat in there, and I had a shit ton of armies on it, so it was, like, impossible for them to uh, invade it. Um, I, not just defensive armies, because oh, that so those have a cap, but I had a crap ton of um, assault armies on it. I think they were... Um, I believe I was playing as a machine, so I'm, I'm pretty sure they were uh, Mega Warforms. I had like 40 or something like that on them. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, uh, they weren't able to take that planet, and it, or sorry, take that habitat, I should say. Um, and because of that, the FTL inhibitor prevented them from jumping into the next system, which had uh, two habitats and... Um, uh, I had a, there was a planet in it that I colonized, but it had two habitats. One was like a research habitat, and then the other was a mining habitat. So, I still had, I lost control of the galactic mark station, blah, 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 blah. So I still had a, some resources coming in a little bit. I, I really had to finagle around, and I turned the planet from, uh, I forget, I think mineral planet, but I turned it into kind of generator and ag planet, um, even though it didn't have terribly good districts. Etc. 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 Wound up building a few habitats over um, planets that didn't have deposit, and they they wound up being for uh, my refineries and whatnot, and also built uh, things like alloys. So I did I did come back from that, not terribly strong. I kind of just got to the point where I took back a chunk of territory, and then I just said fuck it. Okay, let's do some how many safe have right now zero. None of them are. Safe. Where is Great Power, anyways? Are they invading that yet? Uh, yep. Bombing it right now. Shit, I should have moved the pops. It's too bad. Look at all the unemployment we have now. No, they all have Jeff on them. <laughs> Do you still have a Relic World? Nope, that's long gone. The Relic World was... Um, well, actually, the Relic World was in Fenhabanis, Fen over here. It was YT Maug 78, so... Soldiers. There's that. Oh, hey. Um, by the way, let's not go to war with each other. Here's a non-aggression pact. I see you're getting your ass kicked over there, but uh, just to make sure that we're on good terms, let's form a non-aggression pact. Consecrated world profaned. We have lost access to the objects of worship in the Maltholu system. Grief and a profound sense of loss grips the vampire and colonies. Different from a world being declared unconsecrated, this violent denial of spiritual agency leaves the believers of Holy Hematologic Republic shell-shocked and disoriented. The clergy have decreed a half-decade of mourning. So, for the next five years, there's a minus 10% happiness penalty pile. That's actually kind of cool. I've never had that happen before, so it's the first time I've seen that. Uh, let's go ahead and sell our minerals. And we can use them to buy some consumer goods. What else are we running out of? <laughs> We're in the negative on food, apparently. We're producing 0.11 alloys per month. Well, rip for this save. I 100% agree. That's okay. We can always start a new one, right? Give them Pokemon. That should make them happy. I've got a Gen 1 Charizard card. Do you want that? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't eat us. 
That's the problem is, uh, this is a devouring swarm, so they're going to eat us. They are going to eat, 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 eat us up. Yum, yum. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do after this. We're only like a half hour into the stream. I could play I could play my current Iron Man game. Relic World Start Tall Empire. No. Nevar. A hostile fleet has appeared to us. A hostile, a hostile fleet, fleet has, has been detected. More necrophage. <laughs> now we'll have to move on. This uh this poor playthrough is entirely my doing because Tall! Re! No, I don't want to. You're not the boss of me. <laughs> Ethics shift in Ganlarev Trading Coalition. Cool story, bro. Why are these guys just getting... Oh, Consecrated Worlds profaned. Another minus 10% happiness modifier. That's uh, not cool. Short and fat. <laughs> I think, eh. As much as, uh, you know, we're, we're, we'll be doing a... Who's insulting me? The Zelvin Swarm is insulting us. <laughs> uh, they're kicking us while we're down. Those sons of bitches. <laughs> Oh, this is great. Ever feel like your life is all about the have-tos and never about the want-tos, Van Tipiers? Here at Yaxkalok Citizen State, we live for doing the things you don't want to, so you don't have to. Enter a commercial pact with us and maximize the meaningfulness of your existence. Uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> White empires are stupid. They are a pain in the ass. Nah. <laughs> Anyways, this this playthrough was entirely my doing. I could I could like one of my have difficulty run with max right now. I mean I could, but medium difficulty is kind of bleh. I gotta admit. An enemy presence makes itself. Uh, what are their transports? Okay, they're finally invading great power. That will that will fold easy. Bam! There there we go. Lost it. On Sunray's sailing, our one ship got annihilated. <laughs> uh, that's too bad. I have two defensive armies. Do you think we can hold off the two assault armies? Oh, sorry, let me manage 50 planets for half an hour and wondering why... There's three incoming slave rebellions, and why there is a sudden rare crystal drain. I have never had that happen when it, when I have that many planets. They really didn't like you. Nope. Hey! <laughs> These guys are the heroes of the Vampire Empire, whatever. These two Jeff armies. Oh man, look at that. They did their duty. They held their ground. And beat those filthy invaders off our planet so that they didn't eat us. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> I mean, they mass produced clone armies. I mean, they only came at us with. Uh, what's it called? They'll, oh, the problem with doing that, though, is that they start off in orbit. Here, I'll show you. I'll, I'll just let this one. I'll let this one go. But uh, the problem is when you, uh, when you when you do an army, they tend to show up in orbit. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Usually, but they didn't that time. So, let's produce some close armies. I totally forgot about that. Thank you for the reminder. The problem is uh, if you're using assault armies for defense, is that. Uh, Losing those assault armies creates more war exhaustion. 
We don't have to worry about that, though, because we're at 100% war exhaustion, so who the f*** cares? Woo! Breaking stuff to look tough. Oh, yeah. They still don't want a status quo. <laughs> a necrophage one planet challenge? No. Life seated. Life seated, bro, Chacho. It's all about the life seated. What are these guys doing? Seriously, where the fuck is everybody? Well, on the plus side, uh, Brawl is way below our head. <laughs> I had a bad feeling about that. Here, here I was like, oh, I think we might have a chance here. Well, we might be able to hold them off. They've only got like a 16,000 fleet power fleet. If we combine our, uh, if we consolidate our militaries and stuff like that, and then they just showed up 45,000 fleet power. Holy fuck. All right. Hey, whatever it was passed. Yay. Exactly. <laughs> Hold. Hold. <laughs> In the battle today, we will hold the line. <laughs> Man, if I am able to drag this out for like another stream, or another five streams, because there technically would be another five streams to go with this playthrough um, going into December. That would just be hilarious. All right, well, we built up some districts. And Why is my phone going off? I don't care, leave me alone. For Malakath, exactly. Okay, um... Did this son of a bitch have some transport fleets coming? He's, they've got to. They've got to. No reason not to, right? But um, the last one was way over at Great Power, which was... Where the hell was that? Oh, over here. Over there, so... They've got a little... They've got a few jumps to travel. I don't know. Meanwhile, these guys cannot do anything. Steering clear of belligerence. They're trying. We. <laughs> for Ferrari, for the Jeff Imperium. <laughs> They have a bunch more clone armies. The problem with this is that they also have uh, upkeeps, and that and and that is eating into our uh, energy credits. <sighs> Don't I just feel like a stupid turd right now? <laughs> that we have as much stability as we do, honestly. Let's get some generator districts up and running. You have more pops now, make use. I'm working on it. This is currently the Empire <laughs> Um, I guess a couple agriculture districts wouldn't hurt. And while we're at it, we'll do one civilian industries and an alloy foundry. Still can't see those transport ships on sensors, so... Hmm... Might uh, disable an alloy factory. No, I want my alloys. Or sell the extra alloys. I do have two thousand. I guess all those construction projects that I had um, 
went down the drain when we lost uh, we lost that star base. So how much are we looking at? Twenty four thirty. Okay. I'd like to wait so I can sell twenty five hundred. But uh, eh. yeah, we can wait a little bit. Once I get twenty five hundred, I'll sell all of our alloys for sure. It's <laughs> it's min maxing time, baby. Indeed. I don't need to worry too much about food. We're only losing 13 a month, and I've got 12,000, so technically about 1,000 months before we run out. Monthly trades, baby. Use an edict, or if you can, for energy. I'm going to have to. Oh, shit, I've got 1,000 influence. I didn't even realize. Um, let's see. Capacity subsidies. Boop. And what else? We really have anything else available. Crystalline sensors. Let's quickly activate that. Give us a little more sensor range. Oh shit! Oh, there's the transports. Here they come. Ooh, a garrison of 592. Can they take us? What do we have? <laughs> ah, they might not. They might not take us. They might not. They might not succeed. All right, I'm buying more armies. We have so many armies. <laughs> Our total garrison right now is 706. General, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Uh, restrained. No. Um, army upkeep. Oh, fuck. You know what? Army upkeep production would actually be really handy right about now. That. Are they landing? Are you sons of bitches landing? Nope. Pussies. Get down here and fight. You Zeno scum. Sustainable and substantial energy credits, indeed. Uh, no, I don't think that uh, army logistician really helped there much. We're still at negative 43 en energy, so that's okay. Do I have... Uh, yes, I have enough. All right, perfect. And sell 2,500 alloys. Beautiful. All right, now what? Uh, are we generating any strategic resources? No. I have some dark matter, though. Where the fuck did I get that stuff? Oh, it must have been from the dark matter source. Um, do you think I could just sell this crap off? Eh, it's tempting. For Tento? <laughs> We're defending Tinto, so technically, yes, this is for Tinto. <laughs> Governing ethics shift in Yapathy Cartel. Typically, that's where Dark Matter comes from, the Dark Matter source. You just blew my mind, Neomanic. I didn't realize that I had that much stockpiled from... Um, what the hell was the black hole? Demon's Maw is, is what I... I didn't really word that very well. That's what I was getting at. I didn't realize that uh, I'd stockpiled that much from the Demon's Maw black hole. <laughs> well, folks, uh, if nothing if nothing else, this is a good stream to show you uh, what not to avoid doing, a.k.a. do not avoid constructing military sh <laughs> Meanwhile, the strength of our garrison continues to increase. We're about to get some technician. So that'll help with our energy. Let's move the civilian industries up there. Now here's a question. I think, I do believe we regain control of this starbase, maybe. But if we don't, that's the only starbase that we would have a chance at grabbing. We would need ships to take it under our control, but we would need ship, we would need a starbase to build ships. So if we, if, if I can't, hmm, this is confusing. I'm curious to see how. 
alliances, eh? Um, I don't want to guarantee independence because that just hurts. Eventually. What is our envoy doing? Voting to net resolution. Form Galactic Council. No. Absolutely not. Let's go ahead and improve relations. If you somehow survive, friends are nice. Indeed. I'm going to try to make some. Unfortunately, as soon as a 10-year truce is over, these guys can declare war on us again. And I don't think I can build up a 45,000 power fleet in 10 years with one system under my control. One planet and one system. Uh, become a vassal if you must. I hate being a vassal, but we might just have to. Shit. Can we do that? <laughs> Quest to become subsidiary. Ah. All right, so yeah, we gotta wait till we're at peace. So if these guys don't wipe us out, we can become a vassal and attempt to stave off our imminent destruction. Do you have more transport ships on the way? More armies on the way, motherfucker. I will fight you on the shores. I will fight you in the hills. Bottom line is, I will fight you. Make Tintu into the world's most fuck-off scary fortress world. No, that's, that's pointless. It needs to be a resource generator. And the transport ships are flying away. Ha! Fuck you. Get the fuck out of here. You are not taking Rio Tinto. Not on my watch. <laughs> Shit, I should have built... I can't believe I forgot about that. I should have built clone armies on all the other worlds. Uh, like, right when the war kicked off. Damn it. Rename Tinto into New Malakath. <laughs> nah. Um... What idea? New YT Maug seventy eight. There we go. Steering clear of belligerence. <laughs> Steering clear of belligerence. Oh shush. All right, I'm going to disband these. They're starting to just piss me off. Steering clear of belligerence. Fuck off. I think I just saw a psionics expert. I did. Myerific. All right, well, let us begin the long, slow process of seeing if we can take ourselves out of this fucking hole that I put us in. <laughs> Good job, Bobby. Shuck. <laughs> it's okay. With great challenge comes great something else. Great greatness and great adversity and great triumph and great something else. Fire the scientists? I'm not firing the scientists. I like them. They make me happy. <laughs> um, is there another governor that we can grab? Retired fleet officer. Uh, okay. We'll just keep it the one that we already have. Sure. Let's do three hours. Oh, nah. How much are we losing from leaders? Less than 20. We're doing fine. 
We've got enough generator districts online, so we're good. Oh, boy. Are we going to get the chance of a peace offering, or what? we got to wait for their war exhaustion to climb high enough to the point where we can declare status quo. Christ, they might never... They might never declare peace with us. That would be a problem. Huh. Trying to think of what the hell I could do with my new building slot. Uh, I would like to do an embassy complex, but we're lacking the rare crystals each month. I think I can fix that with automatic trades, though. Let's go ahead and add buying one rare crystal a month. There we go. Yay! Open borders from these guys. In the interest of promoting the liberalization of trade across the galaxy, the Gandlerev Trading Coalition will now open its borders to you. Gee, thanks. <laughs> Okay, I've got 45 clone armies on this planet now. <laughs> oh, man, you're going to need a wicked invasion force to take that from me, motherfucker. And there's still eight clone armies being, uh, being constructed or trained. I'm going to do another, one more. That'll give us 55. I love how corporations are ruling. Yep. Can you hire a marauder fleet to take back your star base? You can't really direct them on what they're doing, though, I don't think. Gandler of Trading Coalition joined the Harmonious Tr Free Trading Assembly. Really? Peaceful traders, spiritual seekers. Two federations in the galaxy. Huh. Crazy. No, hire, not send them raiding. This is why I mass produce on every planet and keep 20 of my best soldiers on my capital. There you go. Clone army better than other armies. Um, no. Clone army are actually, like, pretty weak overall because they're not much better than... A, here, we'll do a quick comparison. So we've got Assault Army Vampire and Clone Army Vampire. So, with an Assault Army, it's 1.875 damage and morale damage is the same value. All damage, 100%. Health and morale are both 200. And that is one energy per month okay a clone army does the exact same damage damage except it has 120 percent uh, collateral damage health and morale of 200 and it has a keep of 0. 0.75 so uh, like assault armies are legit the weakest armies that you can train the um one one-on-one -on -one, a defense army is stronger than a uh, an assault army easily um, as you can see here, defense army is rated a little over 60 garrison power. The single clone army is uh, like barely half that at 30, 32 technically. So a uh, clone army has more damage, less upkeep. The advantage of getting clone army is that they are cheaper. They cost less. They are they also faster than assault army. Three times faster. They only take this instead of 90. And, uh, they have cheap, whereas a regular assault is one energy per month. A clone simply has 0. 0.75 per month. That's about it. Uh, no higher not said. Which typically ends up as Gene Manic Warriors Mercenary Fleet is because clone armies take a month to produce. Two. Any any other army one on one, or just about any other army, one on one is better. Like the Xenomorph Army, the Gene Warriors, obviously. Um, frame armies, the machine armies. Clone armies are also not limited by pops. Correct. Um, let's contact... Who's this dildo here? Um, the Quick Luff... Quick Lux from Raiders, Kim. Let's find out. Um... Why the fuck do I have to offer you tribute again? Okay. We know of a good writing tower. Great. We would like to hire mercenaries. Um, 
16 Raiders, 6 Cruisers, 8 Frigates, 4 Cruisers, 6 Frigates, 6 Frigates. What do we got here? 9,000. Hello. Goodbye. All right. Can I hire a leader on this? Not allowed to change the leader of this fleet. Nope. There you go. Okay. Good call. I told my goats did not think about hiring a, a mercenary fleet. <laughs> as soon as a fleet, as soon as one of their big fleets comes over here, though, we're going to get absolutely thwomped. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's too funny. Speak of the devil, I think one is on the way. Maybe, maybe not. Hmm. I am genuinely curious where the hell those stupid transports went. All right, now we're losing a lot of energy because holy shit, all those sh eating into that big time. There is something about having some extra strong battle thrall gene warriors. Go forth and conquer! Exactly. Ideally, I'd like to do a habitat over a Shipso C1. The drums are... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I am Wings of White, great Khan of the Kix Lufrin Horde, and I am here to announce to the galaxy that a new age is upon us. The dark era where Kix Lufrin would senselessly butcher one another for scraps of resources or a misguided sense of honor has finally come to an end. I have solemnly proposed my people a new beginning through the formation of a great empire that will forever enshrine the name of the Kix Lufrin species in the annals of galactic history. To those who would stand in our way, know this, I will stop at nothing to realize the true destiny of my people. If you oppose us, the Kixlufren Horde will grind you into dust. Strong words. We would like to discuss surrender. You seem very articulate. Oh yes, you are perhaps referring to the somewhat crude and, shall we say, rustic dialect that has been used by Kix Lufren up until now. You may not believe this, but the Kix Lufren language was once far more developed. It is only in the last thousand years or so that it has gradually devolved into its current sorry state. But that changes now. Henceforth, all Kix Lufren will be educated in the older, richer version of our language. There should be no more shrieking. I'd like to discuss surrender. <laughs> Ah, oh, this is rich. A wise choice. Upon your surrender, you will become a satrapy of the Kix Lufren Horde and be expected to contribute resources and military personnel to our ongoing wars. Beyond that, however, you will not be required to take part in the actual fighting, and I am content to leave you to your own devices until we have secured the galaxy. The Kix Lufren Horde will go more powerful. I want to send this... <laughs> surrender to the Great Khan. I want to send this just for fun. <laughs> you misunderstand. We meant your surrender. Ha! That shall never come to pass. Your fate will be decided on the field of battle, then, vampires. It makes no difference to me. Your worlds will be claimed by the Kix Lufren Horde one way or another. So can we, uh, try that again? We sure can. Beautiful. We have left the war against the Zelven Swarm due to being vassalized by Kix Lufren Horde. Ha! Fuck you! We're still in this, baby! <laughs> you may now consider yourselves loyal servants of the great Khan of the Kix Lufren Horde. With the signing of this accord, countless vampire lives have been saved. This is a great day for the Holy Hematologic Republic. Once my conquest of the galaxy has been completed, we shall see about revising the satrapy system and perhaps integrating your realm more closely into my empire. Until then, I leave you to rule yourselves. can do. <laughs> uh, battle a lot of a shipe so because it is a worm borders of a hairy swarm. 
incoming transmission. The next continuum. Holy shit, a fallen empire. Biological civilization detected. Initiate custodial protocol 46 subroutine alpha 8. Message follows. Greetings, organic sapiens. You are approaching next continuum territory. These systems serve as a refuge for sapient organics against the blah, 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 threat. For refugee status applications, proceed to central processing. All sapient organic species are welcomed on basis of availability and need. Notice, hostile actions against refugees or custodian systems will be met with maximum available force deployment. Um... Our sacred arms shall not waver. Next. Horde establishes base in a shipe, so for our protection, the Kixlufferin Horde has established a large military space installation in the Ashypso system, defended by a sizable garrison fleet. The secondary role of this base appears to be to encourage us to fulfill our obligations as a satrapy and to oversee the recruitment of vampires to serve in the Great Khan's battle fleets. As the Great Khan commands... A study has been completed. Mercenaries join Great Khan. The rise of the Kixlufferin Horde under their vaunted Great Khan has triggered mass defections among all the Kixlufferin mercenaries that were in our employ. Caught up in a sudden influx of nationalistic fervor, the traitors have all abandoned their contracts and left to join the Great Khan's growing war machine. We had a contract! There goes our fucking mercenary fleet. Son of a bitch. Sebran Archivists. Yes, yes, we've heard it all before. We are the Sebran Archiv Archiv Archivists, and you are the Holy Hematologic Republic. Greetings, well met. Stay out of our space or face certain doom and so forth. Now, if you'll excuse us, we're quite busy. That is the materialist fallen empire. What did we find? Archaeological site discovered. The endless expanse. Way the fuck over there. How is it we suddenly figured out where the hell everything is in the galaxy? Whatever. All good. And next one. This one. Any other rock? Okay, way over there. What's this one? Crashed starship. Never forgets. So, Wankwert Artem is here somewhere. Spajoot! Oh. It's not called Wankwert Artem? That is... Unusual. Okay. Didn't expect that. Alright, centralized command. Yay! Oh, fuck, now I get the chance to fucking... Ugh. This is perfect. Since the mercenary fleet is gone, your economy can recover. Or what's left of it. <laughs> yeah. Something's gonna happen, that's for sure. Alright, let's lock out these... And... Don't need to... You know what? We have enough farmers. Just barely. So, agriculture district. <laughs> oh, man. This is hilarious. Oh, fuck yes. How do we disband these guys? <laughs> Oh, hello, spiritualist peoples. The spiritualist fall empire. Another child. Know that we are the Sibula Watchers, the chosen people of this galaxy. Respect our holy places, and we may refrain from annihilating you. Okay. Thank you. Come again. So here's a question. Where the fuck are the... Okay, there's Walled Garden... No, that's Zanam. Never mind. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I have not seen Zanam in a long time. Guardians of Zanam will be here. Size 25 Gaia World, baby. All right, can I consecrate this? I don't think so. Oh. All right. First thing you need is a habitat for research, defense, or industry, whatever it be you need it. Yes, I do. I don't have the uh, alloys for that, though. And I also need... Um, I had to upgrade this to a starport, if you recall. I also need uh, a construction ship. Don't disband all of your clones. They are a drain, but they are also the only thing protecting you from death outside of the Great Khan. They're also aggressive. Yep. All right, I need my construction ship back. Return. Let's get everybody returning. Return. Return. And return. 
I'll show up. 288. Okay, just a few months. No problem. All right. We got another available envoy. Woo! Let's uh, improve relations with somebody, shall we? Maybe... Uh, um, we're on pretty damn good terms with just about everybody, so... Pathy Cartel? May our nation always be at peace, vampire friends. So, all of a sudden, we're friends with everybody now, too. What? <laughs> Seems legit. We have at least a year or... Um, oh, shit. Look at him go. Construction completed. Uh, how strong are this guy's fleets now? 23k, 23k. Hmm. If those don't split up, he might stand a good chance against those dudes and their 45,000 power fleets. Hmm. Interesting. Alright, I need a shipyard. And a trade hub, please. Where the hell is the... What were we building? Fleet Academy, that's it. So the Great Khan, are they the most powerful group? Oh, no, 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 no. It's the end of cycle, but earlier, no Murbeast ready to whoop your ass in a hundred years. It's 50 years, by the way. For the uh, end of the cycle to kick in. Plus, we can break free of the Great Khan's grasp, or somebody else can kill him for us. That works, too. Hmm. Got an embassy complex coming online now. What are we doing on alloys? Are we only producing 30 total? Huh. I really don't know what the hell I'm going to do for a thumbnail for this fucking... <laughs> for this stream and what I'm going to call it. Oh, man. Hmm. Hmm. Reformer. Corvette Focus, eh? What else do we Plus 5% happiness? Is good? Um, fertility Breacher? I don't know. Um... Damn. Up to at least plus 12 per month of alloys. At least four new orbital mining stations. Okay. Um, four new orbital research stations. <laughs> um, Take this guy. I guess. Corvette focus. Make it cheaper to build some Corvettes. Eh. We'll see. Oh no, I mean like after the murder, Soul Beast kills the rest of the galaxy. I have not done Psionic enough to get the end of the cycle yet, unfortunately. Oh. What was in the Rasnum system? I can't remember. Oh, that was the, the scavenger bot. Shit, they killed it. That's too bad. Alright. What's happening in Jeff's Bane, I wonder? Big old fleet battle. Economics mandate fulfilled. Oh, yeah, baby. I see a big fucking ship that just got blown the fuck up. I really hate that about the console edition. The explosions are like, poof! It's not, there's no, like, big cool... I think it's might be because of the I don't know if that was intentional, but it bugs the shit out of me. I was just a little poof! No actual... Poof, the glorious 
violence of a ship breaking apart. You know? Who's we got? Okay. All right. Hi, Mobius. Thanks for the video, guys. 50 years in my first game. Definitely helped. Not a problem, buddy. Hope you enjoy the game. Don't get too attached to that first game, though. I told this to my uh, a buddy of mine downloaded Stellaris just, like, last week. And he's been playing the shit out of it for the last little while here. I saw him on it a lot this weekend. And when I talked to him about it, I was like, hey, don't get too attached to your first playthrough. He's like, why not? And I'm like, well, there will come a point where it's just, you know, you, you, you're going to have to start a new game. So, like, get used to it. He's like, okay. And uh, he had the contingency show up on his doorstep. And he's like, I see what you mean now. Because <laughs> they almost completely fucking wiped me out. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> All right, construction ship. I need habitat. Okay. I think what I can do is start off by building a habitat around this um, planet. I need 700 more alloys. I can sell food. Trades. I'm buying the crystal for that embassy complex. Okay, how many? Ooh. Okay, let's sell this. Buy that. Now we build a habitat. I'm gonna I'm gonna build an energy habitat over there. That way I can get rid of these generator districts that are here on this planet and go back to doing mining districts and with a few agriculture districts. That'll work. Yes. Bro, I want my rings around planets and shit. <laughs> Fair enough. And we've got the Galactic Council. Son of a bitch. The one that passed. Oh, well. I think I'm at mid-game in my first playthrough. It seems to be kind of a slog right now, but I also played on easiest. I went to war with people just for something to do. Um, easiest. Yeah, that was my problem with playing on the easier difficulties. Is Eventually, it's just like, well, now I kind of just sit here. And, but you can reach that like really much more quickly in the game. Eventually, it's the same when you play on Grand Admiral. If you don't get your ass kicked in, er, in an earlier war, you get to a point later on where your economy and, and your technology boosting you, the effectiveness of your military ships is so much higher than everybody else where it's just like, okay, well, let's just go to war with people for the hell of it. That's all you do. I was so attached to my first game when I got my ass kicked. I played a few other games and I came back to my first playthrough and conquered the galaxy. I went without influence for almost 200 years. GG. Strong tactics. So this is actually a good opportunity for me to show step by step what I do in developing a habitat because this comes up a lot. People ask a lot in the Discord. Uh, in particular, the official Stellaris Discord. And I see it in some comments sometimes where, where it's like, how do I deal with habitat? I keep running out of jobs or housing, etc., etc., etc. And I try to give a concise answer, but the easiest way to do it is just show it. Naturally, the best thing to do would be make a goddamn video about it. <laughs> Alright, do we have pops that we can resettle to the new habitat once it's online? I don't think so. No. I do not. Okay, I need to colonize with Jeff's again. Plop a chamber of elevation down. Too bad. 131 months for our last tradition. <laughs> Orbital bombardment damage reduced by 25% and defense army damage increased by 25%. That would have been amusing to have that a while ago. Galactic Community has chosen a new council. I don't care. Formation of the Galactic Council. The members of the Galactic Community have voted to establish a Galactic Council. Membership in this august body will be limited to representatives from the three most powerful and influential empires in the community. Until a new council is elected, these are the Yapathi Cartel, the Nation of Heshe, and the Mandasura Commerce Guild. The members of the council are expected to lead and safeguard the Galactic Community. Their increased powers allow them to cut through some of the red tape that so often inhibits the decision-making process in large political institutions. Hopefully they are up to the task. I gotta admit, it is extremely fun when you are the most powerful person in, in the galactic community and you reduce the council size down to one and you're the only person on it. <laughs> everybody, well, just about everybody opposes it. It's hilarious. 
All right, we've got some uh, science ships hanging out back here with us. Let's go ahead and have them assisting research for no reason. Okay, what other deposits do we have here in this system? I don't think we have any, aside from those two energy deposits. And one of them is over this planet, so we are securing that by building a habitat over it. We'll need another habitat somewhere else. I think we'll, that will just be refineries. Um, which I can do. I've done a refinery-only habitat. And we could do a fortress habitat, but I don't really see much point in that because the reason for a fortress habitat is to stop hostile fleets from flying out of that system and deeper into your territory. And seeing as how this is the only system in my, under my control, eh, I don't know. Let's see. We'll, we'll get the research complex. Fuck it. Um, I went, uh, Imperial Empire, Spiritualism, Authoritarianism, and Xenophobic is easy as fuck for me. Is the Council part of the Federation's DLC? Haven't had that happen in my game yet. Yes. Um, so, Federations expands on the, um, galactic community in that it adds, uh, deeper resolutions. In the base game, let's t for example, let's take a look at, um, the industrial development resolutions. In the base game, you can normally only go up to uh, the what I call the third tier, which is um, building a better tomorrow, which gives you plus 60% more diplomatic weight for economy, plus a, a bunch of other modifiers. However, with the Federation's DLC, these, re these resolutions go all the way up to a fifth tier. Uh, Project Cornucopia is the one under industrial development. This gives you plus 100% uh, diplomatic weight from economy. It, it unlocks a planetary decision that permits strip mining our worlds to uncover rich mineral deposits. And the bonuses and stuff get stronger. There's also different things that are banned as you, uh, as you, um, go deeper down these resolution tiers and whatnot. For example, uh, tier four of industrial development, uh, causes forge, industry, and refinery planetary designations to gain additional bonuses beyond just like a reduction in the upkeep of the of the pops working those jobs, at, like a metallurgist and stuff like that. Um, it should give it should give additional bonuses. But yes, the uh, there's also the sanctions. I think you can only get like a tier one sanction in the base game. Uh, so a good example would be. Um, under the same commerce and industry section, we were looking at industrial development resolutions. If we take a look at the commerce and, and uh, industry sanctions, I'm pretty sure that you only have tier one sanctions in the base game, which causes plus 10% market fee and minus 20% diplomatic weight from economy. Those sanctions all go all the way up to a third tier, which would cause plus 30% market fee and minus 60% diplomatic weight from economy. So you, you can go deeper down in these resolutions to give you additional bonuses and effects, which are pretty pretty interesting. Unchained Knowledge is one that I actually quite enjoy. Um, for example, Tier 4 of Unchained Knowledge. This normally gives you dip, increased diplomatic weight from tech. Uh, but at Tier 4 of Unchained Knowledge, uh, you get 10% to output from researchers. Uh, you get plus 40% output from research stations. Uh, you must use the most powerful leader enhancement policy available to them or be in breach of galactic law. Um, which is quite uh, quite amusing sometimes. And then last, extra, extra dimensional experimentation. This unlocks planetary decision that consumes Zro to fund extra dimensional research and advanced research complexes. So your researchers need Zero to do their jobs and uh, they give you like better output. This also causes, um, it's more likely that the Unbidden show up when this is active. It's pretty funny. Uh, this gives you plus 50% re to research station output. You still get that plus 10% bonus output to your researchers' jobs. You get even more diplomatic weight from tech. Tech is, cons is weighted doubly is as much as uh, most anything else with that, so on and so forth. Um, the Galactic Council, um, when you when the council is formed, it's the three most powerful empires by default. Safi Bra 2209, oh, that's a bot. I can't wait for the one planet challenge with the doomsday start. It's not happening, Strength Norris, nice try. <laughs> so with the Galactic Council, 
uh, when it's formed, like I said, it's normally the three most powerful empires. But you can try to pass resolutions to change the council size to four, and eventually five, I think, um, to make it bigger and put more people on the council. Or you can reduce the size to two, and then eventually um, one. And if you're the most powerful, if you have the most diplomatic weight in the galactic community, you can change it so that you're the only person on the galactic council. Um, being on the galactic council gives you the ability to veto um, resolutions, uh, which requires a um, this resolution en enable council veto power. Uh, so proposed resolutions, you can just immediately say, no, that's not happening, and just veto it. You can only do that once every long while, but it's pretty fun. You can also, um, initially, the council can declare an emergency measure where uh, any of these proposals, wherever they are, it can bump to the very top of the list and be, get, start getting voted on like immediately because it's an emergency measure. Um, minor research sanctions, let's oppose that. Charter of Workers' Rights. I hate that one. Oppose it. Um, so there's those. Uh, you can also... Um, the Galactic Council is also able to denounce um, an empire. And uh, how they do that... Uh, or sorry, when they do that, what that does is it immediately... It gives... When, when somebody on the council denounces an empire, I believe it, they take a hit in their diplomatic power or their diplomatic weight when you denounce somebody, but they also get slapped with any of these sanctions that are active. There's actually an achievement for having all major sanctions active. There's four of them. And then you denounce an, and then you denounce an empire that you don't like, and they get slapped with all of these, and it's pretty painful when that happens. Um, I, I got that achievement. It was pretty tricky. It just took some time, but it was pretty funny to do it. Um... Pretty much the last thing you can do is uh, you can you can pass a resolution to give a permanent seat uh, to a certain empire on the Galactic Council. So if you yourself get on the Galactic Council, you can pass a, a resolution that gives you a permanent seat and then gradually reduce the council size down to one. And it doesn't matter if you're no longer the most power in the Galactic community, you were given a permanent seat. Unless people try to... Uh, you know, revoke that from you with a resolution or something like that, they they pretty much, they should not be able to take it away from you, for the most part. You would have to use your veto power to be like, nope, nope, I still have a permanent seat, fuck you. <laughs> so those are all the other little things that you can do with the, um, the Federation's DLC that involve the galactic community. Of course, a bunch of other stuff with Federations involves Federations themselves. There's different types of Federations. And when you're in them, you can uh, gradually earn uh, XP for your for your federation, and your federation can actually level up and give additional benefits to um, uh, give them additional bonuses and stuff like that. Okay, this is so the Yapathic Cartel just declared this. Uh, what what are we voting on? minor research sanctions. Th so that was like second or third in the proposal queue, but because the Apathic Cartel, which is on the council, declared an emergency measure, it was bumped up to the top and we're immediately on it. Um, a member could do this, but they can only do it once every, I don't know, I think it's like 10 years or something ridiculous. 10 to 15 years. It's a very long time um, before you can do it. See, it says right here, emergency measure declared. The Apathic Cartel has leveraged their council powers to declare the resolution minor research sanctions an emergency measure. So now we're voting on that resolution immediately instead of waiting for it. I am the Senate. The distant Bayou system. I think they just killed the... Yep, they just defeated the Stellarite Devourer. Huh, okay. Nemesis will add I am the Senate. Yeah when you form the Galactic Imperium. I'm just waiting for a discount to drop on the fourth DLC pack before I get Federations. That's fine, man. That's the smart way to do it. Your patience will pay off, I assure you. Um, DLC pack four. Uh, I, I wasn't really thinking that I would care too much for it, but I gotta admit, Federations and Ancient Relics 
um, have brought a lot of additional flavor into the game that I've really enjoyed. The extra, um, the extra stuff you can do in the galactic community and federations types, the deeper federations mechanics, um, both of which, all that stuff comes with federations, it's actually really cool and it makes it a lot more um, interesting and, um, you know, it makes it more immersive to interact with the galactic the galactic community with the D, um, because you get but you get better bonuses from enacting some of those higher tier resolutions, and the sanctions are actually very very crippling if they're all in place on a on an empire that's in breach of galactic law. Now, if that happens to you, well, you're kind of royally fucked. So <laughs> don't let it happen to you. It's been an hour and a half. We're still alive somehow, and. Um, about 30 minutes left to go. Um, which... Do you have the other DLC packs? Like, I'm just curious, uh, KD, which, uh, which DLC do you have right now, if any? Because myself and several others would say that, uh, I'm, I just want to get a feel for what you have for DLC. I won't say any more until you let me know in chat. Uh, capacity subsidies, okay. Sorry about that big sneeze. Woo. How did the swarm lose all that territory only suddenly? The Great Con, buddy. The Great Con showed up and started beating the shit out of them. The swarm actually could really stand up to the Con and uh, fight him off. Or even lose to him. Oh, damn, they're getting their asses kicked. See, they've still got a 33 fleet over here, but I think the weakest fleet that the Great Khan has is like, oh, there's a 33,000 fleet, fleet, fleet right there. The Great Khan. That might very well be Ancestral Glory class. Uh, can't tell. That could very well be the Great Khan's fleet. I doubt it, but who knows. Unhinged Screamer. <laughs> Where is the Great Khan's fleet, I wonder? That's got to be it. That big honking one that we just looked at. I've got packs one to three. Okay, I'll shut the fuck up then. I have all the DLC. But the territory themselves? What do you mean? The Great Khan's taking all this territory for themselves, buddy. The Kicks Luffren Horde. Look at all this territory that they've got that they're grabbing. Unless you're talking about this little bit over here. All, all this stuff was, uh, I never finished grabbing all of it. Definitely made this game interesting. I put two Leviathans near my damn empire. Oh, that's always awesome. If you can close them off and then you can, and then it's like, haha, nobody else can take these. They will be mine. Got you. Okay. It just isn't red on. Yeah. All the, all the parts that are red is where great. Yep. The swarm. Taken, taken territory from them. Which is a huge of stuff uh, so far. But a lot of this other territory, they've obviously gone in and fought this in these areas and ousted them, like destroyed destroyed the Swarm's star bases and stuff like that. But they didn't themselves build a station. There's a 38,000 fleet right there. Holy, there's a 21,000 fleet. See? That's what I mean. The Swarm still has a chance of fighting the battle. Oh! Is there a battle? Can we see a battle? Oh, yes, we can. Yes, please. What's happening? Get him, boys! this big ass battleship get fucked and we're gonna see it not explode but poof in just a moment and eh? hey 
It's actually breaking apart. I like that. Sometimes they do that cool little animation where the different sections of the ship actually uh, split off and stuff. And then it just goes poof. Bugs, that bugs the shit out of me. That it just goes poof like that. The, the explosions on the PC version are really good looking. You fighting the con? No, we fucking submitted to the con, buddy. Look, this is all we have, is this one little system down here. We were, like, totally doomed, and then the great con showed up, and it was like, ah, shit, now we gotta deal with the con. But I was like, man, I'm gonna have to, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to yield to the con so that he can, they can protect us. Uh, otherwise, the swarm is just gonna beat the shit out of us, so, you know, whatever. We do not have border access for this project. I don't need border access. It needs to be on our home world, really? That is really goofy. All of these... Okay, whatever. Oh, shit. <laughs> Great Khan meets defeat. In spite of her vaunted military genius, Wings of White, the Great Khan of the Kixlufren Horde, has met with defeat in the Unax system. When the armada she was commanding was lost in battle against forces belonging to the Zelvin Swarm, the Great Khan and her closest officers fled into hyperspace in a small shuttlecraft. Even now, Wings of White is busy assembling a new armada to resume her conquests, but this victory has brought some much-needed respite to those who oppose the relentless advance of the Kixlufren Horde. So the Great Khan is not infallible. Son of a bitch, which system was that Unax? That was here. Oh, shit. Yeah, see, that's why. Because they brought their 33,000 and their 40,000 fleets in there. And they were like, get the fuck out of here, bitch! Son of a gun. I just got in a few minutes ago, was doing army stuff. All good, buddy. I started way late, so there's still uh, like 25 minutes left in the stream. I don't think uh, submitting to the Great Khan is going to set things back terribly far. How long is our, how much longer is our truce? I wonder. Uh, the swarm. Uh. Uh. Where? What the? It should. What? Oh. Okay. Alrighty then. Well, they can declare war on us today. Brilliant. Another war has started. The Saban Archivists are going after the Zelvin Swarm. Holy shit. The Materialist Fallen Empire, I believe that is. Yes. They are going to war against the... the we might, we might live through this. Holy shit. No way. It started off real bad. And then the Great Khan showed up and, and is literally our fucking savior. And now, if the Saban Archivists can beat the crap out of the Zelvin Swarm enough... Well, they're not going to take territory or anything like that. But they might completely annihilate their fleets or something. That would be amazing. We have a chance. <laughs> My planet is the only one left. Cool, don't give up. Uh, to be fair, it, it wasn't... Uh, the actual planet that I named after... Uh, that, I, that I named for you there, buddy... Is right here, in Fenhabanis. This is the first League homeworld, if you recall. This is YT Maug 78. We lost that very quickly in the war against the Zelvin Swarm. So the last planet that is under our control was renamed to New YT Maug 78. <laughs> How do you know they're a fallen empire just because they have the same names? Well, it says right there, uh, Saban Archivists, Keepers of Knowledge. That makes them a fallen empire. I can check here, they're a stagnant ascendancy. 
Every fallen empire will be will be coined as a stagnant ascendancy until they awaken. Except for these guys. These guys are called the custom matrix. And then uh, spiritualist fallen empire again stagnant ascendancy. Ah, uh, dang, but awesome. Yep. So, about how late in the game should I expect to be able to take down a fallen empire? That depends entirely on how much uh, ships you have and how good your tech is. Wait, we only have one planet? Yep, we're down to one planet. Here we go. It's here. In, it's here in a shipe. So, we have unintentionally started a one-planet challenge. Uh, Eighty years into the game. Ninety years into the game. <laughs> Okay, how are we doing on that habitat? We're only like half done, son of a bitch. Two-thirds done. I would like that to be finished construction by the time we uh, take off for the night here. Call it a night. We'll see what happens. It was the Clone Wars. <laughs> yep. See, look at all of our clone armies. From the first mirrored arms all the way down to... The 55th Mirrored Arms. The 55th. Warriors to the last. I should enact Mastery of Nature. Increase our district size. This could be problematic because of... Uh, you know, the energy that we are losing every month. But it might be worth it. Oh, shit, don't do that. What's our fleet at? Our fleet is at zero. You can see it right here. Naval capacity, zero out of 54. Pops necrophaged. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. Incoming transmission. This is Great Khan, Wings of White of the Kixlufferin Horde. My defeat at the hands of the Zelven Swarm was a minor setback, nothing more. The Zelvens are brave warriors and worthy opponents, but they too will fall before us. The tide of history is sweeping across the galaxy and nothing can stop it. My new armada has been assembled. After this war is over, my loyal satrapies shall be rewarded for their support. My, my loyal satraps? Okay. A second onslaught approaches. <laughs> yeah, <fle> <laughs> exactly. What's our fleet at? Fleet? <laughs> Right now, I need to really worry about our economy, not our fleet. Um, I can build another... Uh, let's get a construction ship going. And start having that thing build another... Um, what I should do is I should take the Zanbor system. Because I can build a habitat over this planet here. And that would be a mineral habitat. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I can do that, though, as a satrapy. I don't think I can. If I can expand, I will take the Zanbor system. If I can't... Fuck. <laughs> Alright, construction ship two. We can do it. Alright. It's been a long time since I've been a satrapy, so I couldn't remember if I could still build star bases to expand or not. No, as a vassal, you can't. That's a given. Tributaries can. <laughs> what economy? Exactly. We need to turn that from what economy into... Ooh, hey, check out this economy. Alright, here comes our construction ship. Going to build a star base here in Zanbor. And then we will immediately start by constructing a habitat in Zanbor 1, in orbit of Zanbor 1, excuse me. That can be a mining habitat, which will be super duper handy. Still got 20 minutes left, so we have an opportunity to continue turning this around. With Mastery of Nature active, I can Getting ahead, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'm going to have to use more agriculture districts on this world. I don't want to, but I'm going to have to. Oh, 
Huh. Okay. You created this starbase in Hell's Maw? What the fuck? I would like to get that under my control. That will give us access to an L gate, and that's always nice. What the hell's over here? Size 10 desert world. <laughs> Almost done with the starbase. Construction Yeah, okay, I'm going to build a mining station here first to uh, give us a little bit more energy per month. Follow that with build another habitat. Habitats are, have been such a godsend this year. Um, I didn't use habitats much in 1.7, but they were decent. And then in, in 2.2, they were just not good at all. I can't remember exactly it was what it was that changed. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Um, I don't think habitats in 2.2 .2 could have resource districts when you built them over a, uh, a resource deposit. I'm pretty sure that was the issue. So, like, they sucked. <laughs> you could use them as a fortress habitat or a trade habitat or a refinery, but it's like, I do all that on my planets, so... They would have further boosted economy nonetheless. However, I, I literally just never used them in 2.2 because I just didn't care for them. A mistake, I'm sure, but eh. I hate L gates. What's wrong with L gates? L gates are just full of fun and surprises. There's, no, there's nothing to hate. There is nothing to hate from this L gate. Construction venture completed. Quit hating and get freedom. <laughs> Quit hating and get L gates. <laughs> All right, planetary capital this is going to be constructed. We've done mastery of nature. So if you build them over a resource planet, you get those resources as well. No, you don't get those resources. You get special districts. Here, I'll show you an example. Um, so, uh, this habitat is almost done, okay? You'll see when it is finished construction over a Shypso C1 that uh, we will be able to construct generator districts on it, okay? When you construct it over an energy, uh, a planet that has an energy deposit, uh, it, gets, it gets reactor districts. They're different from regular generator districts on a planet. A generator district on a planet gives you two housing and two technician jobs. Whereas a reactor on a habitat gives you three houses, three technician jobs. You know, better better output right there, allowing more pops and more jobs, so you can get more energy per district from a habitat, or sorry, more resources per district from a habitat, I should say, um, for one. So that's with energy when you when you construct one over a planet with a mineral deposit, you get astro mining bay districts. Uh, which give uh, minor jobs, like a planet's uh, a planet's mining district gives you two housing and two minor jobs, whereas an astral mining bay district gives you three housing and three minor jobs. So you can get a lot more minerals from a habitat than you could from a single station. And then they also get special research districts if you construct them over a planet with a uh, research deposit. Let's find a good example. Uh, here, this one. Korash 5. So you could build a station here for three society research each month, or construct a habitat, you get those special research districts, and a single researcher um, working a researcher job is giving you more monthly science than this measly three society, because a researcher gives you four engineering, four society, and four physics base. That's before factoring in other bonuses like stability, happiness, etc., etc., etc. So you're getting, just from one job, you're getting more than a simple station would give you. So that's with a research, um, over a research deposit. And then if you put it over a strategic resource deposit, 
uh, like exotic gases here. Oh, that's a moon. Shit. Never mind. That wouldn't work. See, the, that is one of the caveats of uh, constructing habitats to try to get resource um, resource districts or special resources. They cannot be built in orbit of an asteroid, and they cannot be built... Ooh, there we go. A Shypso C1 habitat complete. They cannot be built in orbit of moons either. They have to be built in orbit of an actual planet. Uh, they cannot be built around stars or other... Um, stellar bodies, for lack of a better term, either. And they can only be constructed over planets. So if you have no planets that have resource deposits, then you're kind of owned. They're, they're basically a... a um, they're a more long-term investment uh, to improving your economy than simply building a station is. But they will give you way more resources. For example, this um, station that was um, in orbit over here it was it was only give, you can see at the bottom two energy per month for resources however with this Ashypso C habitat we now have these reactor districts um, one of these districts gives us three technician jobs and right now technician on one of our planets is giving us 8.8 .8 energy credits per month so a Technician is producing like four times as much energy uh, on this habitat than was being produced by that station. So this is far more beneficial that we uh, colonize this, get start getting it under development, and get people working those technician jobs. Um, anybody got a name for our habitat? I'm just going to call it Energy Station for now. Let me know in the chat uh, if you have a name idea for our reactor habitat. Uh, by default, habitats have habitation districts, which give you plus eight housing. They give you no jobs. Uh, trade districts, which give you three housing and I think five clerk jobs. I can't remember. And a leisure district, which gives you plus three housing, uh, plus two entertainer jobs, to which create a lot of amenities, and, and one culture worker job which produces a little bit of society research and um, unity. So if you're developing your habitat and you're filling in all the building... Oh, geez, somebody else called an emergency measure. Okay, cool. Open borders, eh? Nation of Hesse. So when you're developing your habitat, um, what I found I do to construct a... Uh, to construct a fortress habitat where I put um, fortress buildings down so that I have a lot of soldier jobs. Um, since those buildings produce housing, I don't need many habitation districts. I have maybe two, maybe three at most out of, out of eight. Uh, and then the rest is kind of a mix between mostly leisure districts, uh, but sometimes like a trade district or two if I really need the jobs. Usually no. Because uh, I don't like trade districts. But, um, you know, because I'm not using any building slots for amenities, like a hollow theater or something like that, I'll do a leisure district or two to make sure that there's enough entertainers to produce amenities on that station. On the flip side, uh, we have a habitat like the one here in Ashypso. Because I'm using up the districts for... I'm going to have two habitation districts and six reactor districts once this habitat's fully upgraded. Because I'm using those districts for producing mostly energy credits, I won't have any districts left over for leisure districts, so I'm going to need to use a building slot for a hollow theater so that I can... Or, or it'll be like the chamber of elevation, that kind of stuff, um, to produce amenities. Under normal circumstances, I would just plop a hollow theater down. Anyways, what do we have here? I, I wasn't following chat. The Alamo? Nah. Troy? No. Chernobyl 1? <laughs> it's a reactor, not a, not a nuclear power plant. <laughs> but we could call it Chernobyl if you want. I pretty much inherited all my habitats from one of my incorporated vassals, so I'm having to fill in where they left off. Oh god, AI controlled habitats, even worse.
the AI has a habit of butchering um, their colonies, but especially habitats, because it's a lot harder to manage the uh, the housing and jobs and stuff. Okay, so I need you to build that mining station and then build this mining station. Thank you very much. And that's it. Okay, well, uh, the station is just about to finish the colony ship. Okay, um, I need... Oops, nope. I need uh, energy more than I need minerals right now. Fukushima 5. <laughs> I like to Chernobyl 1. So we can stick with that if you like, Ancient Gamer. That should be fun. Our our first fortress habitat can be like Troy or the Alamo, as you suggested, Drinks Norse. I'm okay with that. Um, sell some of these. Did I not sell any? What the fuck? There we go. Sell some of these. I need 8,000. Jeez. Okay. Um, let's sell some gas. Oops. I didn't mean to sell more, but that's okay. Some moats. Don't want to sell... Excuse me. Don't want to sell our crystal. Uh, I need just under... Just over 8,000. Sell another 500 minerals. It's going to be a bad idea. Maybe we could just buy 250 a couple times. A study has been completed. That would be better. There. Now that I've got enough, throw distillation is done. Holy shnikes. All right, let's get. Uh, Let's do the hydroponics farming instead. Okay, so we've got we've got this guy building a mineral habitat here that he's been working on for a bit. It'll take him a while still. This guy here, I am going to go ahead and build a fortress world, or sorry, a, a another habitat just floating over one of these planets without a resource deposit. And the reason for that is I'm going to turn it into a fortress station. Deep Space Nine. <laughs> <laughs> it took me forever uh, because um, the only Star Trek that was on Canadian Netflix was uh, Next Generation for a long time but the rest of the Star Trek series were made available it was several years ago but they're, they're all still on there now and it took, it took me some time to get around to watching Deep Space Nine because I wanted to watch um, the ones that I would watch on cable TV, like Voyager and uh, Enterprise, and I really liked those. Um, and my... Like, Deep Space Nine was first on when I was... I was quite young when it was first on. And I did try watching it as a kid, but I found it... It was mostly just boring, and I didn't really enjoy the episodes, and... I found out from going back and watching it on Netflix that, well, that's because most of the episodes I watched as a kid were from season one, and most of season one for Deep Space Nine, but the same is true of just about every Star Trek show, is god-awful. Like, the worst episodes of the entire series are in uh, season one, pretty much. Well, not all of them, but a bunch of them. And uh, when I actually watched all of Deep Space Nine and I got through it, and I was like, wow... That was a good fucking show. I loved that. Deep Space Nine was really well done. Oh, it's now that we're adults. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll admit, I liked... I liked Star Trek as a kid. Like, Next Next Generation was on by the time that I was born, pretty much. Um, so I grew up watching Next Generation, I, and I tried to watch some of Deep Space Nine, but um, it was... I, I wasn't 100% following it because I was just so young. And um, I did start watching Voyager when that first came on, mostly because I liked the idea behind it, where it's uh, 
you know, it's a lone ship lost in a faraway part of the galaxy and all that stuff. And, you know, they, they really hyped up that it's the first female captain in Star Trek. Da, 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 da. Um, so I watched uh, I watched a decent amount of Voyager um, when it was on television, and I liked it. Who's wearing the red shirt? Yeah. And Enterprise, I watched a lot of that um, in uh, 05, 06. My, my aunt and uncle that I was staying with while I was going to school on the west coast there uh they had they had satellite and the space channel the canadian space channel showed an episode of star trek enterprise like every night at like 10 o'clock so i made sure i watched that and i was able to get through most of like a really good portion of the series of star trek enterprise um just watching satellite tv Late in the evenings. And I, I really liked it. The later seasons I thought were much better. Looking forward to getting the Aquatics DLC. Sure, whenever that c turns up for consoles. That's not going to be for a while though, Katie. Sounds like I'm slightly older than you, but yeah, I, I tried D Deep Space Nine as a kid and couldn't do it, but I loved it when I finally did watch it. I loved Voyager as a kid. I say kid, but I don't know. Teen, kid, whatever. Um, I was born in December of 86. So when Deep Space Nine first aired, I wasn't even 10. I think I was like 7, 8 years old. I did like uh, Next Generation as a kid, like I, before I was even 10 years old. There were some that, there were some episodes that were that like I love now as an adult that I didn't really care for when I was a kid because they were like, you know, as I felt they were boring. Uh, faction founded, free, freedom something. Okay. So, we have our habitat it is now colonized. The problem is we are. it is colonized by these Jeffs. And we have to resolve the problem of low stability. How we do that is we need to plop some amenities down. So I'm going to do a chamber of elevation first, followed by a habitation district, and then I can start doing... Because housing is going to be an issue. And then I can start doing uh, some reactor districts. I don't have the minerals for more, though. Uh, normally, if we weren't playing Necrophage, what I would do is w w one of these pops would be unemployed, and the other one would go in as an administrator, which would be producing eight amenities and three unity. So we wouldn't have an problem right away, but we would have to employ this second pop. Usually what I would do is uh, one of these building slots would be a robot assembly plant to start... Um, pop growth as quickly as possible. Enterprise was okay. It's very hit or miss for some people. Um, the ones that I caught on TV were most of the better episodes. Like, season four of Enterprise is so good. Like, when they're getting around to basically the birth of the Federation and that portion of, uh, of time in the story. Really, really good. Really good. Um, I liked Enterprise in general. I thought the overarching story behind Season 3 was eh, decent. I I actually quite liked the whole... Uh, ooh, unrest, this too shall pass. Son of a bitch. Um, I liked the whole Zindi arc in Season 3 of Enterprise, but when I, when I was catching Enterprise on television there, I wound up watching a lot of the really good episodes that uh, stick around with you for a while. Um... I think the best episode on Star Trek Enterprise was, it's called Cogenitor, and uh, it's where they make first contact with um, another spacefaring empire that actually has, like, they have male and female, but they have what's called a cogenitor, and, um, you know, it's basically a third gender that's needed for copulation and procre procreation and stuff like that, and the engineer uh, sticks his nose where it doesn't belong, and because he realizes that the cogenitors aren't really treated as equals. So he sticks his nose where it doesn't belong and starts fucking being like, Oh, you're a person. You can learn this, that, and the other thing. And this cogenitor learns how to how to read and write and stuff like that. And uh, tries to seek asylum aboard the Enterprise because these other people are pissed off. And it's like, hey, why are you interfering with our cultural norms and stuff like that? 
And when he's like, when the captain, Captain Archer's like, I really can't do anything right now. You're going to have to stay with these people and go back with them. The cogenitor winds up killing itself because it's like, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm less than a person to these people. I don't want to go back to this. It's a really, really good episode. I know I kind of just ruined it, but uh, you got to watch it. One of the one of the best Star Trek episodes in all of the series, in my opinion. It was really good. All right, I got one clerk sitting around doing sweet fuck all. That does not fly with me. I need... Eh, I don't really need... What I need are generator districts. Let's do an agriculture district, though. We could use a farmer. Star Trek in the 70s. See, I need to go back and finish that because I got... There's only three seasons, and they have that on Netflix in Canada as well. Chameleon Field Exposed. What? A chameleon energy field of some sort concealing an ancient structure was recently exposed on the surface of a, Sh a Shipso B2, a lifeless planet inside our space. Only a chance asteroid impact, which was deflected off the field with the while the planet was being monitored by a passing freighter, revealed its existence. Creates ancient tomb archaeological site. This should be investigated. Holy shit. Happened right there. Cool story. Um... Anyways, yeah, I got a good portion through Season 2 of the original Star Trek, but I haven't finished it. Um, it was it was difficult. There were some good episodes in there, but it was difficult getting through most of it. Worst episode, Jordy turning into a fish person or whatever it was. What? I don't really remember that one. I should go back and re-watch uh, TNG because it's been years since I've done that. And I've, re I've watched Voyager through, like, I think three times. I've watched DS9 at least twice. I've watched Enterprise at least twice. But TNG, I only watched the once for some reason. And that was a very, very long time ago when uh, when it first turned up. Anyways, it's actually been uh, a good two hours in the stream. I'm going to save the game. So we can actually pick this up where we're leaving off. Because we're not dead yet. Never, we're not counting ourselves out just yet. Pretty fucking, pretty fucking touch and go there. God damn, we, we were down to our last bastion of defense, and uh, some quick thinking from the chat there reminded me, hey, you can defend yourself, and I was like, oh shit, yeah, I should have done that with the other planets. We could have held off invasions if I just built some clone armies on those other worlds, and then we might have some under our control still. But. I pulled a dumb, so shit happens. The situation we're in is 100% my fault, <laughs> but nevertheless, it was a lot of fun. Uh, let's see if we can uh, pick this back up, because this is a really crappy situation. Was only on from 66 to 69, seems it ended the year the men went to the moon. Watched that live. Uh, take it easy, everyone. Have a good night. Yep, you too, Blind Orphan. We are not dead. See you later. Have a good one, Semper Buffo. Neil Manic, take care, buddy. Ancient Gamer, you are one old motherfucker. <laughs> Your name suits you. <laughs> All good, buddy. I appreciate you coming by tonight. So, yeah, huge thank you to those of you who came by to watch me play this live tonight. Semper Buffo, Blind Orphan, Neil Manic, Moog78, um, Emperor Badger, Strength Norse. Uh, who else was there? I gotta go through the whole freaking list. Runicat popped in for a bit there. Appreciate it. And Ancient Gamer. And who else? I'm missing somebody. I'm missing somebody, but I can't find you. KD Guitar 61. That's right. Uh, my bad. Almost forgot about you. And we had two bots show up this stream. That's more than normal. Usually it's just the one. But eh. <laughs> yep see you next stream ancient gamer have a good one buddy um so yeah great time spending this with all of you uh live this evening we'll we'll be back on friday to continue this playthrough and don't forget to pop by thursday's stream where we uh continue our playthrough of mass effect legendary edition with jonathan booty warrior shepherd we are so close to the end uh we'll be done that playthrough uh, in the next two streams. So basically next Monday will be the last stream of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. It would be great to have you for these final two streams. 
I encourage you to pop on over to uh, the live stream. They'll be starting at 6 o'clock Mountain Time. Don't know how long they're going to go. Um, I'm hoping that they will each be three hours again um, to, fill up, to pad out the time, but it depends on how quickly we beat the game, I guess. So hopefully I'll see you then. Uh, in the meantime, those of you watching this in the future on YouTube, if you enjoyed this playthrough and watching me get my ass royally handed to me, do click the thumbs up button and leave a comment down below uh, how much sick pleasure you got from that. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. That way you will be uh, up to date. You will uh, be up to date with uh, new videos that come out regarding my, my live streams or even just my Stellaris Console Edition content. The goal for 2021 is to still try and hit 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Uh, we've got a little, about a month and a week left to go and uh, several thousand subs <laughs> still to come in. So anything you can do to help out with that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, that includes subscribing yourself and sharing this content with anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. Don't forget to check out the links in the description below. You'll find one for the official Stellaris Discord where you can become part of the greater Stellaris community. There's a big section for us console edition players to discuss the game amongst each other. Maybe I'll see you there. There's also a li uh, links to my own personal stuff. For example, you'll find one for my Twitch channel, which I streamed this off of. Give me a follow there and uh, pop on over Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. Uh, the normal starting time is 7 o'clock Mountain Time. We'll be going back to that uh, starting uh, that stream start time. Uh, once we're done with Mass Effect Legendary Edition next week there. So come December, when I start streaming No Man's Sky, all four of those days will be 7 o'clock Mountain Time uh, stream starts. So jo join us for the No Man's Sky playthrough. And join us for the Stellaris Console Edition streams. We have a lot of fun during the live streams, and a bunch of regulars keep popping by every night, and uh, which means a great deal to me. So it would be awesome to have you here to join us. You'll also follow my Twitter feed. Uh, give me a follow there as I post important announcements there all the time. And last but not least, there is a link to my own personal Discord as well where you can um, chat with me on a daily basis if you want or chat with other people who also watch my stuff. That is the best way to stay in contact with me is joining the Discord. All of those links are down in the description below. Hopefully I'll see you there or uh, during one of the next live streams. In the meantime, this is MobiusY signing off for now. I've got the night off tomorrow, so we'll see you again Thursday. Good night and take care.